welcome back. Hopefully we won't get too much flickering from the lights. If we do, I'll have to re-record this because this is quite an important, for me anyway, little video to make. Um, here in England, we have a very uh, strange attitude towards American beers. Uh, we think it's all like Coors, Miller Lite, Budweiser. Nothing could be further from the truth. America has some of the best breweries on the planet. Just a few that spring to mind. Things like Charleston, that's for Kenny, <laughs> who you won't have heard of much, uh, but also uh, Russian River, um, which is Pliny the Elder and Pliny the Younger. Uh, it's Vinny, Vinny's Nail, you might remember from one of my previous videos. Uh, when I started doing some uh, spontaneous fermentation. Also Allagash, uh, the alchemist, not alchemist, the alchemist. Um, plenty, and especially Cambridge Brewing Co. Now Cambridge Brewing Co, I got to hear about in uh, 2020, just before COVID kicked in. And uh, I took some friends from the St. Mars of the Desert Brewery, Brewery of St. Mars of the Desert, for a little canal trip, and they had a, a friend visiting from America. So uh, Dan and Martha from St. Mars of the Desert, SMOD, shorthand from now on, uh, brought along this guy called Will Mayers. And um, I think Dan had obviously been talking to Will, because he said, uh, Will said to me, I understand you like Magnolia. Well, Magnolia, is a little brew pub on Haight Street in San Francisco. And whenever I'm in San Francisco, uh, I make a point of uh, dropping in for lunch. <clears throat> and uh, he said, well, if you, if you like them, you'll probably like this. And he gave me a can of Flower Child. I don't know if that, how well that will come out. There you are, Flower Child. And, um, a more appropriate beer, it would have been hard to um, hard to guess uh, at getting me because it was stunning. And he also gave me uh, one of his um, a bottle actually of his of one of his cherry sours, his uh, spontaneously fermented cherry sours. Anyway, got to have a few email convos with Will, and I a rather cheekily but tongue in cheek, not particularly seriously said. Any chance I could have the recipe for Flower Child? And um, he said, yeah, all right. He sent me the recipe for Flower Child. I haven't passed it on because it's not really my, um, my recipe to, uh, to share. But, um, and a few, few more emails. And, and he kind of like inspired me to look a little bit more in depth at my brewing. Up until then, I was what many might call an enthusiastic home brewer. And through a couple of the, 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 the kind of things that he'd, he'd said, he moved me on a few stages and I started looking at my efficiencies and um, started analysing my brewing practice and, well, ended up with, with this lot. <laughs> uh, so, It came as a bit of a shock where just over a week ago, I started getting a few messages saying, hey, you know that little brewery that you like in Boston, Massachusetts? I didn't mention that, did I? Cambridge Brewing Co is in America. I should have mentioned it. Well, you probably guessed because I was talking about great American breweries. Never mind, forget that. I got some messages saying, did you realize that they're shutting down at the end of this year? And I thought, what? Um, I'll play you a couple of the, uh, the news items now. Cambridge Brewing Company announcing it will be shutting its doors later this year. After 35 years in business, the decades-old brewery issued a message on Facebook that was today saying it will close on December 20th. Cambridge Brewing Company opened in Kendall Square back in 1989, and its final four months of brewery will still have patio season, fiest beer, and also a new menu for the fall. A Cambridge favorite announcing it will close. The last day at Cambridge Brewing Company will be in December. It's been a staple in Cambridge for 35 years. The announcement was made today on Instagram. The general manager says the company 
is about more than just the drinks. We've gotten calls today. Um, we've had people stopping in all day and just kind of, um, you know, wishing us the best and, and kind of sharing our bittersweet feelings towards the closure. Um, this place has meant so much to so many people over the years. The brewery's owner is retiring. CBC will close December 20th. It's bizarre uh, and terribly, terribly sad because I had and I kind of like COVID got in the way and then I stopped doing the lecture tours. So I no longer have a paid reason to go to America, but I had planned on on going over, seeing some friends. And I got quite a few friends in Massachusetts around Boston area and uh, and then nipping over to <laughs> nipping over <laughs> to uh, San Francisco for a few days. Uh, but just didn't get around to it. And I'm thinking now, have I got, have I got time to, to like slot that into my schedule and go over and say thank you in person? Um, so, yeah, weird. It's a weird. This is a weird video to be making, I'll tell you now. I, um, I'm eternally grateful to Will for just, just those couple of words to push me, give, give me that, that little... Um, that little motivational jog that I think I needed and I haven't really looked back since so yeah great great shame I might try and um, I might try and squeeze a visit in maybe uh, as a, yeah um, but if Will ever watches this then thank you uh, for not only uh, just being a groundbreaking brewer. Will is, is a brewer's brewer. If you look at any sort of like textbook, especially on things like brewing with wood, you know, wooden casks and spontaneous fermentation, then they're always gonna mention Will Mayers. Um, so yeah, awfully grateful, very grateful. Um, and if you're ever over this way, there's a, there's a bigger boat outside this time that, uh, that you can have a go at steering. Uh, probably be a little bit easier because it's got a steering wheel as opposed to a stick that you wiggle at the back or a tiller as we call it in boating terms uh, so yeah strange video and uh, yeah sad I'll leave you with, um, with a YouTube clip uh, of, uh, of Will talking about brand loyalty uh, which is fascinating in its own right until next time you take care Cheers. I really think that craft beer itself brought about the end of the idea of brand loyalty. When I was a kid and prior to that, people drank a beer and I identified with that beer. And if, you know, if I'm a bud drinker and my son's a bud drinker and my grandpappy drank bud and, and that's what we drink. And, oh, you're drinking Miller? Well, that's crap. And you must be a terrible person because you're not, you know, drinking the same beer as me or smoking the same cigarettes as me or whatever. Um, that, that kind of brand loyalty has really been lost, um, both to our credit, I think, and also to our detriment. You know, I've never met a single person who says, I'm a Sierra Nevada Pale Ale guy. That's all I drink. And if you drink Sam Adams Boston Lager, well, you suck. It doesn't work that way, because once people are introduced to flavor, they want more flavor and different flavors, and they want to try new things. So there aren't, in my, to my knowledge, people who have like a perpetual six pack of flower child IPA in their fridge and that's the only thing that they drink and if there were I would think that in a way that would be a little sad because that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to expose people to uh, to to more flavors and more fun things to to try and embrace <laughs>